I'm sure. Sorry. Yeah, you go ahead, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I, I really, I'm sure that most of the INS members will be very keen to know how to do this work. And let me come in today to the team who are working on this uh, very important subject. And uh, they, they, I'm looking forward to a very interesting development in the future uh, for the application of the energy. So, Dr. Washington, welcome to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, respected senior members and uh, of INS and friends, after a long gap of one month, I'm welcoming you all for this uh, INS webinar, which is normally held on Saturday. But due to some unavoidable circumstances, this time we, we have it on Sunday. But we will uh, surely go back to our Saturday webinar format uh, next. As you all know, we invite eminent scientists and engineers with notable accomplishment to give talk on subject of interest to our members, particularly on nuclear science and engineering and also on topics of societal importance. Today's webinar is 20th in the series, and we have with us Dr. Lalit Varshanai, former outstanding scientist from BRC, who will talk to us about his, his famous work on radiation technology for sewage sludge hygienization, genesis and development. On behalf of INS and on behalf of INS webinar subcommittee, I welcome you, Dr. Varshanai, for this uh, for agreeing to give talk to our members. Firstly, I'm very happy and uh, proud of Dr. Varshney, Varshney's contribution to the society. He has demonstrated how an R&D product can be commercialized and popularized in the society. In 1980s, uh, sludge used to be pasteurized before disposing. And when that failed, partial aerobic thermophiling and fermentation followed followed by anaerobic sludge digestion uh, was practiced. There were many pros and cons for this method. Now we have heard of use of radiation technology for sludge hygienization. One plant is there in Vadodara called Shri, that is sludge hygienization and radiation indicator. It's in operation for more than 30 years now. And recently another plant costing some 3.69 crore has come up into operation in Ahmedabad for sludge treatment and conversion to fertilizer. Uh, a written report of these two plants have been uh, given to as a reply to the question in Lok Sabha by a Minister of State in Prime Minister's office. This is an indication how this product has taken the national stage. Such plants will be of a solution to the problem of dumping sewage into the river, thus contaminating the river. On the success of these recent plants, uh, I think there is a plan for Indore and Pune also. And I'm sure Dr. Vashne would be covering all this in his talk. And we'll also take some questions from the members if there are any. So I hereby request, uh, uh, Matasi has given his opening remark. So before I invite uh, Dr. Vashne, I have to introduce him uh, to the audience. Though he doesn't need an introduction, but then for the slay comp completion, I just want to read out. Uh, Dr. Vashne is a presently a RRF in uh, Electron Beam Center. He's a senior professor in HBNI. Uh, he's, a post, he's a postgraduate in uh, chemistry from Delhi University and PhD. He's from 25th batch of training school. Joined isotope group of BRC in 1982. His areas of expertise include radiation technology, application in healthcare, environment, and industry. He has more than 145 papers in peer-reviewed journals, four patents, five technology transfers, and he has guided six PhD students. He is also chairman of BRNS committee, advisory committee, chairman of, uh, of Mumbai Textile Research Association and Sri Ram Industry Research Institute, Delhi. He is recognized expert by IAEA and, prom and promoted radiation technology applications in developing countries. His notable contribution include radiation sterilization of medical products, pharmaceuticals, 
hydrogel wound dressing technology is a patented one waste wastewater treatment technology for dyes and toxic metals there is technology transferred to two companies cesium extraction from nuclear waste technology again a us patent and a pilot uh, facility in ig car sewage sludge treatment technology ahmedabad and indore facilities and electron beam treatment of effluents he is a recipient of number of awards national award on technology innovation on polymeric materials and ministry from ministry of chemicals and fertilizers he is awardee of uh, indian nuclear society uh, he is a technical excellence, excellence award from dae he, he has uh, uh, he has been been awarded with group, group of achievement award and uh, he and he has an award from uh, ninth acharya rc ray memorial uh, award for a distinguished achievements in technological innovations and entrepreneurship so highly enviable career uh, we have seen with uh, dr varshney and now i'll request dr varshney to give his presentation thank you dr ramarao and dr mehta for nice introduction and very good evening to everyone and at the outset i would like to thank ins for giving me this opportunity to share some of our work with the uh, participants and introduction is already spoken by dr rao and my name is lalit varshne i am presently working at electron beam center kargar so today i will be talking to you on a subject which i practiced for almost a to 10 years in the end of my career and uh, the topic is radiation technology for sewage sludge hygienization genesis and development how it started and how we uh, developed it to a commercial level plan so this is my topic Uh, which i will be discussing with you today now if we i will give you general introduction also if you see world today there are 7.9 billion people and out of that 4.2 billion people live in cities in by 2050 the people living in cities will be about 5.44 billion so you can see more cities are developing more people are migrating to cities and the main problem which i will be discussing is related to cities only and because large number of people are living there and environment is a big concern every time you will read in newspaper television and other forum about climate change water pollution solid waste problems space and air pollution and it is all due to human activities if humans were not there mother earth would have taken care of all these changes itself but since we are there we are progressing plus producing this kind of issues which are harmful to us or harmful to our even our existence so we have to do something to mitigate these issues so that life can be sustained on earth now talking about india india has more than 1.3 billion people but only a little over 30% of its population lives on less than rupees 100 a day around 80% of india water is severely polluted because people dump raw sewage silt garbage into countries river and lakes so these are some numbers which uh, i mean people living in cities like us uh, may not realize that uh, in totality this is the situation now let us see our urban areas they produce 120000 tons of fecal sludge on daily basis about 65% of country households are not connected to sewer system and therefore 60% of this human waste is dumped into open water and open land in mumbai it is dumped in sea 
you may be knowing about a three to five kilometer long pipeline going from Verli into deep sea. A whole Bombay sewage, is, uh, sewage goes to there. Although internationally it is banned, but we continue to dump our sewage from Bombay into sea. And Bombay and Delhi, you know, they produce about 2,000 million liters of sewage every day. And this much quantity of sewage we are dumping into sea. I think those who are eating fish should be careful. Fish is coming from sea. They may have anything. And where this pipeline opens, there the fish size is much bigger than the normal size because they get so much nutrients along with heavy metals, pesticides, drugs, whatnot. So this pollution into sea is also a problem. Now, I think Bombay, Delhi, Delhi, they already have sewage treatment plants, but Bombay is very less, maybe one or two in Navi Mumbai, but Bombay, they just do primary treatment and dump into sea. And now I think uh, they have planned to put up a uh, sewage treatment plant in many parts of the Bombay, but I don't know when it will take place. They started, but where it is, at what state it is, I'm not aware. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is a very popular program by our Prime Minister. It's a good thing that he started and realized that this thing is very important. And under this program, 2014, government has made about 10 crore toilets in our country and spent about 70,000 crores, giving access to toilet to large population. But however, most of them are not connected to sewer lines. So, Toilet is available, but at the end of it, it is again polluting. The septic tanks are there. We call Indore as the cleanest city, but there also half of the population uses septic tanks, toilets. And these toilets, septic tank, where to uh, these people who collect that septic, where do they dump it? I think uh, they dump it into the sewer line or open water lines, lake, rivers. Again, they pollute. So our prime minister started a good program, but uh, I don't know. We have tendency to defeat the programs. And uh, uh, these kind of things happen. But somewhere we are wrong. Toilets are there. They should have thought of about how to dispose the septage. I think uh, I am using some terms like septic, septic tank, you must be knowing. And uh, uh, since people are from INS, they must be knowing something about radiation and all those things. So I will not uh, talk anything on those subjects, but general. Now, if we see biggest cities in future, Delhi will be the biggest city by 2035 with population of 43.35 billion. And Mumbai is second, I mean, sixth in the 10 top cities and uh, the large population. So they will use water. They will use water in kitchen, toilets, bathrooms. And where this goes, it should go to sewage treatment plant. And then after treatment, either it should be converted into reusable water or left in uh, water bodies on meeting CPCB norms, I mean, Central for Pollution Control Board, they have some norms, though they, those should be followed to discharge this kind of water. And in advanced country, it is strictly done. But um, uh, we are still, I mean, you know what happens in our uh, country. Now let us look sewage and sludge. In the world today, we produce about 1 trillion liters of sewage and which we have, I have considered that a person, normal person, family uses about 200 liters and 4.2 billion people in cities. So that uh, comes to about 1 trillion liter. And from there, this sewage, about eight, about a billion tons of sludge is produced. So quality and quantity of sludge. Now, if you see the quality and quantity of sludge indicates health of water treatment facility and the city. 
Now, if you analyze sludge of a city, whether the Bombay or Ahmedabad or Delhi, you can analyze if there are more druggists in Bombay, the sludge contained drugs. So you can, if there are more drugs, you can see the people in Bombay city taking more drugs than Delhi or even smaller cities like pesticides, heavy metals. So I, on analyzing, analyzing this type of material, one can know the health of the city itself. Now, as I told you that city like Bombay, Delhi producing about 2000 million liters of water every day. So we can, we can treat it and reuse it. So that sewage water will become a resource for economic activity and sludge for soil fertility. Because water is going to be scarce and we will in future use this water uh, as a resource for our uh, industry. So this is especially in Gujarat where water has gone even uh, so deep, groundwater level has gone so deep that it is difficult to even uh, dig bore wells. And um, so this kind of water, if treated and reusable, it will be a good thing. And in fact, city like Surat, Ahmedabad, and many cities now, they are reusing this sewage water and treating and then reusing it. So it becomes a uh, source for income for municipalities. Now in India, in uh, our country, we produce about 38,254 MLD. Now, this figure I have taken from Ministry of Urban Development, which is five-year-old figure. So, this may be now about, because many sewage treatment plants have come up. So, it should be about 50,000 million liters every day. And this produces about 7 million tons of solid infectious sludge per year. Now, if we extrapolate this, to 2040, this sludge becomes about 24 million tons. Now, it's a humongous amount. Now, those who would like to know where water is treated, this is a sewage treatment plant where there is an aeration tank. And then you, this, you can see this black colored mass is called sludge. And it is, since it is coming from fecal uh, matter, mostly it is fecal matter. And this is highly infectious. I mean, it cannot be just thrown like this. So major concerns in this sludge is heavy metals. Because actually the fecal metal should not, uh, domestic fecal matter should not have heavy metals. But unfortunately, textile industry, battery industry, automobile industry, they leave their water untreated into sewer lines. And this goes to sewage treatment plant, and that's how heavy metals come. Then pathogens, anyway, because coming from different sources, it is pathogens are there. Organic toxins, you will see, even we are habitual, if medicines are left, sometimes we pour it into sink, it goes. We throw in dustbin. And then it goes to the sewer line. So in nutshell, this sludge, is, this is a very big problem to dispose this infectious matter. And what is being done today? The, it is disposed in unregulated matter. I mean, you just, they uh, tell people to pick it up. People take in truck because it is a very good organic manure. So people, farmers take, people take and sell it to farmers. Farmer put it into his field and he gets good yield. But on the same side, he is also polluting the soil and uh, crop, which goes to the people and people fall sick. In the city like Nagpur, they don't give it to anyone. They simply keep collecting it and there are many hills in Nagpur, uh, in the uh, municipal premises. They call it smoking hills because of anaerobic digestion, methane is produced and it catches fire. And they, then there is a fire. Recently in Delhi also you saw solid waste hills caught fire because of the methane and there was a lot of smoke. 
and uh, that's how because of pollution many people die in india more than a million people die in india because of air pollution i mean these figures are mind boggling if you uh, just search google and you will get these figures sold to farmers in unregulated unhygienic ma ma manner at throwaway prices for agriculture application as i told that they give it to farmers and what are the option to municipalities see in advanced country like america europe and they pasteurize this sludge they use heat because they have lot of oil and energy so they can do this so it is expensive and then they sometimes if the sludge is small they can use uh, lime calcium oxide which uh, they mix it with sludge it produce heat it is chuna basically so with heat the pathogens are killed and that's how they can uh, use the sludge then sun drying fortunately india has lot of sunshine so sun it can be dried but it is unreliable if the sludge is there maybe the surface is uh, in disinfected but the inside one remains so the this uh, it rem pathogens ova helminths so many other things are there and one of the method which is now catching up is radiation so we'll talk how exactly we did it and all of you may know that how radiation interact with the dna of a living cell and break dna so that the cell become cell is not able to multiply and that's how the bacteria viruses pathogens they are inactivated we don't say killed but they are inactivated mean they are not able to multiply and same philosophy is used for cancer treatment where cancer cells dna is inactivated and the cancer cell do not multiply so this is just a basic that radiation has got this very fundamental property to inactivate living cell and that's how we use it for different application now this radiation technology to hygienize sludge many attempts were made and uh, albuquerque in new mexico was the first one in 1970 to um, uh, 1985 they use cesium 137 to hygienize sludge cake using 1 million curie stores and producing about 8 tons per day but it was closed down because of the they were using cesium so uh, there was a lot of hue and cry so this plant was shut down then vadodara uh, in india since 1992 we are treating liquid sludge so uh, you have to be very clear it is liquid sludge which contains 3 to 4% of solid sludge so this is uh, the sludge hygienization research irradiator in vadodara which was is existing since 1990 to now almost 30 years now what radiation does to the sludge it kills pathogen as i told you then it degrades chemicals in the sludge whatever number of chemicals are there they are degraded it reduces smell practically if you hygienize solid sludge there is no smell at all otherwise from 1 km you will come to know there is a sewage treatment plant then it kills weeds the along with the sludge there are weeds so when you use this sludge in the farm land the weeds come along with the crop so it's a new sense so if you treat it with radiation weeds are not there it is a pure carbon containing manure then because we are killing pathogens bacteria and other thing we can inoculate it with useful bacteria like uh, for nitrogen phosphorus and potassium and there is no competition with other bacteria so these bacteria multiply fast and the number of bacteria in the sludge grow to significant number and this useful bacteria then when go to soil they mobilize potassium phosphorus and carbon is anyway there from 30 uh, 30 to 35% carbon is there in sludge 
so it's very useful for farmland the shri facility vadodara uh, this the how it looks the sludge is lying outside so what exactly they do is that liquid sludge is circulated in a st uh, steel uh, cylinder which has uh, cobalt 60 rods and they give 3 kg radiation dose and after hygienization the liquid sludge is poured onto the this sun drying beds where it dries up and then the sludge is picked up by farmers but unfortunately when the sludge is drying whatever bacteria pathogens are left because we are hygienizing we are not sterilizing it and since there is no competition the regrowth issue comes up so sometime there are more bacteria and pathogens than initially they were present because competition was not there for the bacteria so when i became head in 2011 so this shri facility was in my section so i visited there and since it is operating from long time and uh, the technology did not multiply so i wanted to know why exactly this has not multiplied and an analyzed and i found that if we have to hygienize whole vadodara sludge then which is about 100 tons per day we will require 12 million cubes of cobalt 60 and shri we will require at least 20 plant facilities like shri to hygienize whole vadodara sludge and then i as i told that recontamination due to open sun drying is also there and i calculated the cost it was coming about rupees 6 to 7 and it 6 to 7 rupees for treatment of waste is too high people don't want to pay more than 3 to 5 paisa per kilogram or uh, for liquid and about 50 to 1 rupee for solid so i concluded that it is economically not viable to have this kind of facility for demonstration it is good that it can hygienize but on large scale it may not work and that is why it has not multiplied for more than 25 years so that made me think that why are we hygienizing a liquid if solid solid sludge is the problem why not hygienize solid itself where is the problem only difference was that liquid takes 3 kg of radiation dose whereas solid will take little higher dose 6 to 10 kg and since i worked for many years in isomed i knew what kind of uh, this issues can be solved and how this takes place so immediately we did uh, experiment the same day i took help of my people at shri facility took the sludge filled in the gunny bags and there is a plant universal isomed in vadodara and we did uh, we put some microbiological dose uh, dosimeters and then we counted coliform bacteria per gram and we found out that at even 6.85 to 9.03 roughly average dose 7.948 this coliforms are not detected at all and the biological indicators which are radiation resistant they reduced by Three to four cycles, which is enough to hygienize sludge, because when we reduce three to four log cycle of bacteria in sludge, pathogens which are most generally present in lower numbers automatically get killed. So this I knew from my experience. So I immediately concluded that this can be practically done, because the treatment cost was coming less than one rupee. from 6 to 7 rupee it came down to 1 rupee so that was the thing and then where to put up this facility in uh, shri facility the cvs treatment plant we were putting uh, 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 radiation treatment plant before the drying bed so that liquid rise in the drying bed and sludge is formed what i did after drying beds we put the plant where we take the solid sludge put in the gunny bags and then irradiate and then hygienize them 
so this is how the whole concept we created that how to now how to implement it we need people and i wanted that it should be done quickly and if i had taken drc this thing i think it would have taken a long time so i was trying to catch hold of municipality itself so we calculated that uh, how dry sludge can be uh, beneficial so we calculated the treatment cost comes about 1 rupee chances of recontamination almost nil and to treat 100 tons of uh, uh, sludge we require 1.5 million curie so from 10 to 12 million curie it is only 1.5 million curies and then we can inoculate with plant growth bacteria since we are killing pathogens so we can inoculate with uh, plant growth uh, bacteria and so that it becomes bio fertilized i will tell you what is the advantage of inoculating in my later slides so i we made contact with ahmedabad our vyas ji was there so he uh, helped us to contact shrimati d thara who was commissioner there uh, in uh, ahmedabad municipal uh, municipal corporation and fortunately she was a biologist she is a biologist so she could under, uh, understand our point of view that how we can uh, have it and we signed mou with them in 2015 she is Ms., uh, mrs d thara who was commissioner at that time now this gentleman mr narasan is surat so after ahmedabad we talked to him and to put up this kind of facility so uh, he started he okay will do it somehow now they should be able to do it now so this is a team uh, we signed mou at drc in technology transfer group now the question people ask is there are heavy metals heavy metals are there even salt we eat so there are limits there are uh, rules and regulation which says how much heavy metals are permitted so first thing is that we don't expect sludge to have heavy metals but it is there because of our industry now how to minimize the use, how we can either we control the polluting source or we reduce the use of sludge now how we can we reduce the use of sludge by increasing efficiency of sludge by adding plant growth promoting bacteria so if we were using 10 tons per hectare we can use 1 ton per hectare by uh, this so by this philosophy we can reduce the uh, use of sludge and uh, we don't have that much sludge to uh, give fertilizer to everyone but if we reduce we can cover more farm lands to this and we uh, then contacted anand agriculture university who have patented this uh, bio npk um, uh, cultures for this kind of soil so we thought why not we integrate it with sludge and we integrated this with sludge along with them and by hygienizing the value of health benefit and environment protection cannot be calculated we are saying treatment cost is 1 rupee but we cannot calculate environment issues and health benefit which we get by hygienizing this sludge which may be much more than the treatment uh, cost so in totality if we see that it is one of the best method to treat sludge and you reuse it into the uh, farm land and uh, we started construction of this plant in 2016 you can see vyasi made several visit to see the um, that this takes uh, shape because uh, our late dr shekhar basu said vashne unless you put two units in the field i am not going to congratulate you unfortunately he is not there even after first unit he congratulated me this uh, yes you have put it up i am very happy so but he is no more with us to look for second unit so finally the first unit was uh, inaugurated in 2019 and it's a 100 first facility in the whole world 
there is no such facility operating where the sludge is hygienized in using radiation technology and then inoculated with the plant growth promoting bacteria and converted into bio fertilizer the whole cost of the project is 30 crore where 15 crore is the cost of radiation source itself and it protects health and environment provide organic carbon to the soil see our um, soil is getting depleted of carbon and that's why ministry is promoting that do organic carbon farming but carbon from where carbon to uh, will come so this is a very good source another source is compost people are using compost in the field uh, which contains uh, about uh, 10 to 12% carbon but this contains about 30% to 35% carbon so it's a very good source of carbon and we can replace some of the um, fertilizer with this kind of manure government gives subsidy on urea about 15 rupees per kg subsidy is given to on urea so if we uh, substitute some of urea with this even that money is also saved so we should not uh, look at its commercial viability individually i mean we have to look at in totality how it is going to help our country in disposing this kind of sludge which is ever growing it is not going to stop it is ever growing now it is only thinking how people think about it i don't advise if people want to make money out of this in fact gujaratis can even make money out of it and there are some proposal that how they want to make compost it sold at 3 rupees 50 paisa per kg with less carbon our this sludge can be sold at even if at 2 rupees 1 rupee is the cost 1 rupee is the profit it is self sustainable so now i hope this things will slowly grow grow up and uh, people will put more plants and this was on 2nd march um, 2019 the facility was in a, inaugurated and this is how it looks like and uh, i will show you a small movie i hope it plays and you will be able to see Ahmedabad, an ever-expanding metropolis, is witness to rapid growth and prosperity. Growing population and rapid urbanization generates large quantities of human and industrial waste that contains pathogens and toxins that pose a threat to both health and environment. The need of the art, therefore, is a robust, efficient, and sustainable infrastructure to safely dispose domestic and industrial sewage. To subsea its treatment. and generation of enriched sludge free of pathogens at sewage treatment plant at pirana in amdavad in the chamber receives raw sewage and distributes it equally to screen channels screen channel intercepts and removes large objects and floating material from sewage drip chambers remove grit consisting of sand gravel cinders and other solid materials primary clarifiers partially remove suspended solids and bonds aeration tanks decompose organic waste with the help of bacterial culture fine bubble diffused aeration ensures aerobic environment in the tank secondary clarifier separates activated sludge solids from the mixed liquor chlorination disinfects the sewer and thickener removes some water content anaerobic digester decomposes organic matter in the absence of molecular oxygen while belt filter press further reduces water content in the sludge radiation and enrichment of sludge dry sludge containing 25 to 30% moisture is brought to sludge irradiation facility the sludge is crushed using crushers and transported to carrier boxes with a transfer conveyor In a fully automated process, the filled boxes are loaded to a moving overhead plant conveyor. The conveyor carries the boxes to irradiation cell, where the sludge gets irradiated to irradiation dose of 10 kilogram, which are sufficient to kill pathogens and partially degraded chemical contaminants. Radiation technology, which uses high-energy gamma radiation, 
is known to kill pathogens and degrade chemical contaminants. The hygienized sludge is moved to liquid biofertilizer station, where it is spread with liquid biofertilizer as a continuous consortium of useful bacteria, which mobilizes nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the soil to use by plants. This enrichment makes the treated sludge a very value-added product for agriculture applications. Considering millions of tons of sludge is generated in our country every day, the use of irradiation technology will recycle this infectious waste material to manure and derive economic benefits and protect health and environment for a cleaner and healthier India. So I hope you could see the picture. Hello. It was quite clear. Yeah. Thanks. So the um, uh, trade, uh, these people in Ahmedabad, they have uh, uh, trademarked this uh, product as BioGold. They have registered this as a BioGold and now they are using it as a BioGold fertilizer. Now, parallelly, what we did, we started conducting when this plant was under construction, we gave projects through BRNS and through Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation to local agriculture universities to see what is the effect of use of sludge on different plants and crop. They studied for three years and found out that there is a 20% reduction in chemical fertilizer if we use one ton per hectare, this bio gold and no significant increase in heavy metal load in the crop. So these are good findings that we can reduce the use of chemical fertilizer. And this 20% subsidy is saved on urea. So that itself is a big saving. Now there were news, now this Ahmedabad plant were over. So there was a lot of coverage in newspaper like DRC scientists convert dry sewage sludge to uh, bio gold and uh, after see, uh, reading this indoor municipal Co commissioner contacted me that uh, they would like to visit Ahmedabad municipal uh, corporation this facility we invited them they came he is collector uh, dr manish singh who was then municipal commissioner of indoor city now he is collector and she is mayor of um, uh, uh, indoor city and you can see some of our uh, friends like Ganesh, uh, Sri Krishna Gupta, myself and then food technologist uh, Gautam and then Anand uh, was from Simic engineers who constructed this facility. If you get a chance please visit indoor facility this is a state of art facility where sludge enters and bag comes out no human intervention. Ahmedabad plant was just a beginning plant, so we had to uh, find out ways and means to, uh, pro to solve problems. But it is also a good plant. At later stage, also we have added some facilities to make it similar to indoor facility. So if you get a chance, please do visit. And this is, uh, um, we sign MOU. See, we have to get their money invested. So, uh, we have to really give several time lecture, meet uh, officials and discuss, convince them <laughs> that this is the thing. And um, uh, he was municipal commissioner. We signed MOU with them. And now few days back, this indoor facilities has become operational. And I hope uh, that many more such facilities will come up because there is no other way to hygienize sludge. In fact, I was talking to Mr. Montek Singh earlier some, some years back in presence of commissioners from all the states. And he was not, uh, he was astonished to know that there are no norms for sludge and nobody is treating. So I told them, see, there are no methods and no way to treat Then, If we are treating, it is a better way better way to dispose this kind of product. 
सॉरी एंड दिस केम इन न्यूज पेपर इंदौर की बड़ी उपलब्धि विश्व का दूसरा स्लज प्लांट तैयार आई मीन इट इज द सेकेंड दिस थिंग इवन इन आई आई दे रिकोगनाइज दैट इंडिया हैज गॉन अहेड विद दिस काइंड ऑफ फेसिलिटी एंड पीपल शुड टेक इट पॉजिटिवली द प्रॉब्लम इज हाउ टू मेक पीपल अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस काइंड ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी कैन बी वेरी यूजफुल एंड जनरल पीपल वेन दे हियर अबाउट रेडिएशन दे आर फियर अबाउट इन एंड न्यूज पेपर ऑल्सो दे विल मेक इट ए मसाला टाइप सो दैट पीपल रीड इट पीपल रीड मोर अबाउट नेगेटिव दैन द पॉजिटिव पार्ट ऑफ इट रेडिएशन एज सच इज सो अवर थर्टी परसेंट प्रोडक्ट आर स्टरलाइज बाई गा रेडिएशन पीपल हैप्पीली यूज दैम बट इन अदर वेयर दे आर नॉट डायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व और दे Uh, do not understand they will talk about it so as a member of ins we should educate general public that there are application which are not harmful and this is just a fear that people have in their mind so it's a state of mind or thought that they fear about this thing now this was all about our uh, radiation technology for sludge hygienization and now what is next since i am working at Harger practically for one year only because two year were COVID, so I could not do much work with them. So now they are they are very good in developing machines. So now one MeV hundred kilowatt machine is almost ready. And if I am there, I will see that this one machine is at least installed in less than two years because it takes time to build, make building and put it there. We are trying our best that we should put this. kind of machine either in textile industry or leather industry um, and there are challenges but who thought we will put sewage sludge hygienization plant in india we are nowhere in the world till there so what i feel where there is a will there is a way and i am sure that we we are going to put up this indigenously made accelerator in environment protection industry other other industrial Uh, applications anyway everybody can do it but this kind of thing only uh, done with more difficulty so we will take it up and put it into the industry and this is the picture of our accelerator which we have already there in ebc and if people are interested they can come and see and uh, they have a very good dynamic uh, leader dr archana sharma who is now pushing this program to come to the field and everybody wants that this development is taking for last 20 years and nothing has come so but now i am sure that this machines will move out of ebc and see the light of the day and how exactly it is going to be put see uh, in the effluent treatment plants are not one step they have many streams many stages so generally if effluent is entering a electron beam facility it gets irradiated so what happens that dye molecules or organic molecules are broken down to smaller fragments and once they are in smaller fragments the aeration tank where biocultures are there bacteria can eat this fast and so the output of this is increased suppose it is 1 mld maybe you can increase by 20% and that's the saving and cod bod smell color these things reduces very i mean we are not assuring that 100% but in complementary form to the sewage treatment plant this will definitely help to increase output and meets cpcb norms this is just an example how this colored effluent becomes purely colorless and if you do some tertiary treatment like using uf membranes or ro membranes this can be reused and once reused mean this saves water so we calculated the cost of treatment using electron beam coming about uh, 1.5 pesa per liter which is quite affordable by sewage treatment plant but if we reuse we can save money on uh, because the, if you have to buy mil, kilo liters of water it has cost and that cost can be compensated by this and then major cost in electron beam is power electricity 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन मिलियन इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट हंड्रेड किलो वॉट मशीन में रिक्वायर अबाउट वन सेवेंटी फाइव टू टू हंड्रेड किलो वॉट ऑफ पावर सो इट्स ए बिग एक्सपेंडिचर बट वी है प्लान दैट वेन वी आर यूजिंग एक्सिलेटर यूज सोलर पावर एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट कैन बी कट डाउन एंड देन वी हैव ए बेटर वे टू मेक इट मोर economical and these machines are being put up in large scale in china and some other countries like korea america they are using it instead of 100 kilowatt they are putting 500 kilowatt 800 kilowatt machines so but somewhere we have to begin with and slowly this technology will also come up and all this work we did it so it is not that i only did it i only conceived the project and made the how it can be done and persuaded people to help us make this facility and made those people to invest their money and put up this facility because unless outside people are uh, we ourselves can boast of our technology but outside people should appreciate and put up those then that is the success so for this project many people were involved from amdavad municipal corporation from brc from brit from indore municipal corporation and simec engineers they all contributed and support and encouragement by dr shekhar basu and sri ken vyas who they were always with us we they never said no i wanted this okay you go ahead so they always supported and this is how these two projects have come up so nothing in i think balotra ji also shows in this slide nothing in life is to be feared it is only to be understood now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less so people have to be educated so they know more about it and this quotation was said by mary curie and i say when radiation technology helps common man atom smile this is what uh, is my <laughs> quotation that radiation tech people look towards us for help and if scientists do not help who is going to help about this problem there are many things which i can talk about this but for this today's talk i uh, end my talk with this uh, quotation that when radiation technology helps common man atom smile and thank you very much for your kind attention i hope you enjoyed my talk thank you this uh, open uh, dr rao you may yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we can take some questions if they are yeah. there i don't see any no, i am b m misra i would like to yeah please go ahead please, sir please. go ahead uh dr basre b m misra here ah uh, how are you <laughs> very fine how are you yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, nice you. to hear hi I, nice to hear your voice i enjoyed the talk very much you know i have been working in this similar field mm -hmm. uh i just wanted to know you know i have been hearing many talks of water and effluent water treatment they talk of circular economy mm -hmm. that means treating uh, recovery of all the water from the sewage and also power production and recovery of mineral where uh, you fit in this technology in that circular economy picture where it can fit in number 1 and number 2 uh, your second talk uh, second portion of the talk was uh, at kharga you know that they are using membrane technology ufro density treatment and the water usable water at least there is a rcf that they plan so is there a comparison between your uh, treatment and the treatment by ufnr yeah see what i will give you an example and explain you yeah. uh, see surat municipal corporation they receive about 300 mld of sewage in their plant mm -hmm. they treated using their biological system aeration anaerobic digestion they make gas methane gas and methane gas they convert into electricity and yeah. they use that electricity electricity to run the facility right and then treated water they use ro and uf mm -hmm. and make it you industry usable water which they sell 10 to 12 rupees per kiloliter yeah. yeah so now what is left in the sewage treatment plant is sludge yeah 
Mm-hmm. Which which doesn't fetch them anything. Only they have to pay money for lifting it up or doing this. Now mm-hmm. we can hygienize that, inoculate with the plant growth promoting bacteria, and mm-hmm. they can sell it. So it becomes a uh, source of uh, revenue for them. And this is one of the best method in India. Nobody treats sludge. Now mm-hmm. at least we are treating it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like advanced country, US and other things, they use heat. They have a lot of oil, so they can heat it so much quantity. So for our technology, there is no competition because nobody treats. Okay, so it complements. It complements. It complements and oh. it helps them. And what about the ECB, the treatment of? Uh... Yeah, electron beam technology is now gaining importance because with this. high power accelerators we can treat larger volume see effluents are of the order of 200 million 300 million liters oh yeah they produce and other technologies they can do very little a sewage treatment plant are of the order of 100 100 300 mld so x number of accelerators can be used to treat this kind of effluents and they, in textile industry leather industry the dyes they use they are bio refractory bio refractory mm-hmm. means the bacteria are not able to break down yeah. they remain in the effluent mm-hmm. so with electron beam we can break down so that bacteria can eat them away and so the cod bod can come to the level otherwise they straight away dump into the sewer line water right. lot lakes mm-hmm. and other i hope uh, i could reply yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you thank you i think there was a question from uh, Prasad Naik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lalit, uh, nice talk. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just one question. Literally, in North thing, I understand we gave them the first uh, charge free of cost, right? Uh, what they did for it? Amdavad also. First, first COVID- charge means we have given three hundred curies. Yeah. Because it was a demonstration facility, so we gave three hundred okay. curies. Now, after how many years they will have to replenish it? Now they have to buy from Brit. No, no, that is okay. What will be the next time they will have to buy after? Now, right now, see, instead of hundred ton, they are able to do thirty, forty tons. Okay. So uh, slowly they will. The advantage of gamma uh, use of gamma radiation is that you can slowly refill your source as and when you require it. Uh-huh. But accelerator, you once you have hundred kilowatt, ah, that will refill. Yeah. yeah. But now the question is, how much they will have to pay the every two years or three years when they are doing it? See, uh, see, one one point five million curie cost, one fifteen uh, crores. So mm-hmm. every time they have to buy two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. So accordingly, they have to pay. Okay, okay. Because yes. that could be a substantial cost for a municipal corporation. Uh, but if they sell this, see, we are ah. trying to get license from fertilizer control order. Mm. I am not there. I am sure if I was there, I would have got it. But uh, uh, they are struggling to convince this fertilizer control order people to mm. uh, get license. They can then sell it at three rupees. So okay. uh, we have calculated that the cost, including the source cost, the treatment cost, comes at about one rupee per kg. And if they can sell even a two rupees kg, okay, so they will make money, and then they, they will make, make money. And once it is approved by fertilizer co- control order, this thing, mm-hmm. then the government itself is giving one rupee per kg subsidy for organic manure. Okay, mm-hmm. so the treatment cost is uh, taken out by uh, this thing, because okay. this is the money which municipality spends, but we don't know how much environment is protect- protected. Yeah, yeah, that will be. Uh, so if you calculate them in your calculation, right? Yeah, yeah. So in that, yes, there will be a lot many gain. Gain, yeah, yeah. So in totality, uh, initial co- investment has to be done by government because if private party do, then uh, they will put up radiation sterilization plant. They will not put up hygienization facility. But one project proposal came that they want to export this hygienized sludge to Saudi Arabia because it is good uh, source of carbon, and there is no carbon in their soil. So if they put this, they can grow farms there. 
so that's how people have started thinking different commercial application of this material other than um, uh, farmland mm. so there are uh, horticulture floriculture where this kind of uh, product will be very useful they can grow flowers and then use it there are some other application uh, i will discuss in some other talk how we can use radiation technology to increase the production using sea weeds thanks a lot yeah yeah thanks uh look, sanat kumar uh, you want to ask your question i should read out from your chat box sanat kumar ji so please read it out uh, dr uh, yeah 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 uh, uh, dr vashney sanat kumar has put something in the chat box he wants to know with radiation of liquid uh, sludge it can be made sure that all parts of it are irradiated by circulating the liquid sludge but with solid sludge in gunny bags how can it be ensured that all parts receive radiation from the source okay you may know that gamma radiation has a good penetration it can uh, penetrate in meters of thick material and so we put dosimeters we call some dosimeters and before irradiating we find out in the container what is the maximum and minimum dose position and those position we keep dosimeters and then it dosimeter receives dose mean the radiation has passed through the material and that's why after that it receives and minimum maximum dose we find out so there are ways to do dosimetry and calculate quantitatively how much dose this material has received and because gamma radiation uh, they uh, pass through everything because of based on this there are 23 radiation sterilization plant in our country and more than 200 plant in the whole world where they use similar containers and irradiate it is it a, only one bag at a time or many bags you put for this? it is many bag there are uh, about 200 containers inside the uh, uh, this uh, building No, but do all the bags receive the radiation, or only one bag at a time? That's no, no, time. all all receives. See, they they move in circulation. Ah, uh, okay. carrier, two carrier, they go inside and then come out, then go inside that way. If you have seen a facility, it is it will be very clear to you. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Ah, uh, Malatra ji, you have a question. Uh, Lalit, uh, I had uh, two queries which are interconnected actually. Okay. In the beginning of your talk, you mentioned about you made a mention about uh, heavy metals. Yes. In the sewage. Yeah. So now, whatever treatment at uh, at your plant is being done, you convert the sludge into solid sludge. Yeah. And then you treat it, and then uh, it is expected that this can be used as a uh, fertilizer. Yeah. So what happens to the heavy metals? See, 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 naturally, if you are going to use for food grains or agricultural products which are to be consumed by human beings, yeah, is it safe to use this uh, because of the heavy metals? Yeah, very good question because this is this is the question which troubles many people, and I have tried to answer them. So I will answer you also that there are standards. set by united state environmental protection agency us epa there are norms how much cadmium is permitted how much uh, zinc is permitted copper is permitted mercury is permitted so they have a list that gives you how much heavy metals are permitted in sludge and how they have found out these limits they have fed crop with the maximum sludge and then analyzed that uh, crop that what is the uh, permissible limit in crop and by feeding with sludge how much it uh, goes to the crop and that's how they have uh, done and this sludge is a subject which has been studied for more than 50 years and they because sludge is everywhere in fact our sludge is much more cleaner than us sludge us and europe sludge they are more contaminated with heavy metals european they are still more is strict so what we do like ahmedabad there are five six plants we check their heavy metal concentration a plant which is having which has surpassed the us epa limits 
we discard we do not use that sludge and every Achha. month we uh, see the sludge concentration uh, metal concentration in uh, sludge and then as i told sludge if you see us epa we can use at least 40 to 50 tons per acre oh, sorry 40 to 50 tons per hectare of farmland this sludge can be used based on maximum us epa happy heavy metal now what okay. we have done we have inoculated this sludge with plant growth promoting bacteria and we yeah. use uh, we recommend only 1 ton per hectare okay so the heavy metal load in the soil is uh, almost equivalent to background level with yeah, okay. this 1 ton and we get similar crop yield so we have two ways we are using sludge as well as we are using less in quantity and so that the heavy metal this thing is there it is just like salt if you use more salt one has blood pressure but if you as in limit <laughs> uh, no blood pressure but we are giving very low uh, salt then it may be a problem but here we are trying to minimize use of sludge because of this issue we can use more as per the norms but people uh, talk about this we use minimum sludge and then we are analyzing heavy metals in the sewage treatment plants so that we can use it and right now in india nobody does anything about sludge okay. so we are giving a proper organic manure to farmer and this thing we try to explain to fertilizer control order committee that please look into it what we understood in 10 years you cannot understand in 5 minutes we invited them you come and visit but so far they have not visited and okay, okay. bureaucracy comes into the picture and i am yeah. not uh, i am very open that they if they come they talk on table they will understand because uh, it requires lot of reading and understanding to come to these conclusions acha dr lalit i have that second part of my question yeah again i am also very proud that <coughs> see uh, i mean Uh, india is the first country to use radiation for treatment of sludge whether wet or uh, uh, dry yeah and yeah. Uh, we, we being proud of that fact but it also amuses me that rest of the world i mean they they know radiation they they are uh, uh, using radiation in many other sources why others are not using it for this purpose and second is which is related to this uh that recently i think last week only i saw some news item that uh, uh bombay municipal corporation or or uh, maybe in the mmrda region some four plants they are going to put up for uh, sewage sludge treatment yeah. yes. and when i was going through that news item i did not find a mention of this radiation technology so are you aware that uh, i mean uh, Uh, BMC is going to put up these four plants and why you are, मतलब हिंदी में बोले तो दीपक तले अंधेरा क्यों मतलब technology has been developed at Mumbai why yeah. the Mumbai people are not going to use it yeah no uh, uh, the दीपक तले अंधेरा नहीं है Tata Tata companies uh, they have approached us in 2019 we have given them a certificate that we will help them to set up this technology. but the problem is there is bombay municipal corporation is feeling there is no place in uh, bombay and they have to set up such kind of facility outside bombay so transportation of sludge to those places so transportation cost will increase dramatically so that may be one of the reason i don't know what what stage it is in fact director brc has signed that letter and given to uh, tata this thing because they they were replying against tender so that question was there that please mention the technology for hygienization of sludge so some people may use hot because heat but that will be quite expensive to use so much yeah. to this yeah, yeah. and why other countries are not using it is something like that if they you have lot of money then you can easily do the job by other methods like us and other thing they it's not that they did not put up they 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 put up first plant to hygienize sludge using cesium 1 million purity plant 
but because of their CGM, you know the issue of CGM. So they yeah. public outcry, they had to stop. And uh -huh. radiation that here is there. But in our country, uh, I think we we are the first one. And other, it's Germany also they put up on pilot plant. Korea, they put up some pilot plants are there. But our country is huge and we produce a lot of sludge. And if you don't treat it, it is going to cause havoc in future. So why not start treating? Now, government of India is also coming up norms of sludge disposal, which are similar to US CPA. They are exactly the same. So now norms will come and there will be policy to uh, these things. So slowly India is also changing, evolving and our cobalt is cheap. And now accelerator we are developing. So probably in, uh, this thing, if you use accelerator, the cost of treatment will be become half. So uh, things will be better. So I, I hope people understand the logic and uh, what benefits are there. And as I told that initial investment has to be made by government because private people are not going to put their money in this venture unless they can make more money. And slowly they are finding ways and means to make money out of it. So it will take time, but it will come up. But municipalities definitely can put up. And if you happen to see the indoor facility, you will uh, really like it. And uh, another problem is that India rains are there. So dry sludge is not available. So four, five, three to five months when rains are there, what to do with this facility? So we have given a provision that we can irradiate industrial products into the same facility using a different conveyor system in the same. That, that probably that, uh, I think, you know, given the mentality, I think some a place where sewage sludge is being done, nobody would like to... No, no, uh, but any other products, any, yeah. No, no, uh, but industrial products, no, uh, one can do. There are many products not for human consumption, uh -huh. for animals, for plants, and uh, yeah. those kind of products can be deemed. We cannot definitely not sterilize medical products there, yeah. but uh, other things we can. Medical products and food leave aside, the other industrial products can. Teflon we can irradiate, seaweeds yeah. we can irradiate. And which okay, are used thank, as TV. thank you. Yeah. So maybe yeah. some other question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Amar Garg had a question. I think after listening to Varshne, he may be satisfied. Uh, Dr. Garg, uh, are you satisfied or you want to ask him? My question was to the fact that as uh, over 60 half life is. Uh, only little more than five years. So why not to use cesium 137, uh, which has got a long half life and uh, I think should be easily available from the radio. Okay. Yeah, but you see the energy of uh, cesium is 0.66 MeV, which is uh, half of this. So in radiation plant, you will require, instead of 1.5 million, you will require, I think, more uh, cesium. And uh, uh, then penetration will be less. So right now, cobalt is available. And uh, cesium, use of cesium is still not popular. In our, we have no facility where using cesium. Only recently, Brit has started making gamma chamber out of cesium. A few of these things. In fact, I have a US patent where we have uh, made how to uh, make cesium pellets in polymer form, which is much easier. And the pilot facility, they have putting up it in IG car to try and now they are trying for ERB approval for making such pencils. And definitely, if, if we have plenty of cesium from nuclear waste, we can, uh, you rightly said, we can use it. Yeah. But uh, how now pencil, making pencil and some people should be there to take these programs ahead. So I hope uh, we, are lit we are quite slow in many of our programs. So I don't know when it will come up. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chaurasia has a question. Uh, you want to ask Mr. Chaurasia or I want to read it? You want me to read it? Mr. Chaurasia? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. 
Yeah, can you ask now, him? Actually, uh, I would like to compliment Dr. Vashne for an excellent talk on the very important subject. And in fact, Mark question I wanted to ask has already been asked by Sri Malhotra and it has been replied by Sri Vashne. So I think uh, there is no need for me to repeat the same okay. question. Uh, thank okay, you. okay, good. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if there are no more questions, I think we should thank uh, Dr. Vashne for an excellent presentation. Now I will request uh, our uh, Secretary INS, CSK Malhotra, to give a vote of thanks. Malhotra ji. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rao. And to, to start with, I have to thank the speaker, my very good and uh, very good old friend, uh, Dr. Lalit Vashne, uh, for an excellent talk. Of course, we have together done many public awareness programs. So I, I know him as a speaker, a very energetic uh, uh, and uh, uh, speaker who speaks with conviction. And conviction comes uh, from the fact that he has, uh, whatever he has done, whether it is development of hydrogel or now development of this technology, he, he is the developer. He has done it with his own hands. So it is from there that the conviction comes. So another excellent talk, uh, Lalitji. Uh, my compliments and uh, my thanks on behalf of INS and on my personal behalf to you. And then next to that, of course, uh, I, I thank uh, Dr. Ramarao and his subcommittee for the webinars of, of INS. And I, I also uh, thank uh, our president, Shri Metaji, uh, for guiding us uh, for the entire program of INS as such, but uh, this <laughs> webinar series also. And all the members of executive committee of INS for their guidance and support from time to time. I also thank uh, Shri uh, G.D. Mittal, who I think has gone for a picnic today. Uh, he has gone <laughs> to Alibag, so probably he is not uh, seen in the audience. So uh, our uh, treasurer, uh, Mr. Mittal, <laughs> and uh, 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 Dr. Shijit, uh, who are always responsible for our, uh, as I always say, propagation of information about the webinars. So I thank uh, both of them. Now, another task which I usually do is I announce the next <laughs> webinar. But uh, I think uh, Dr. Ramarao is not ready with the next speaker. So I have, I have no notes. No, in government language, bureaucratic language, I will say I have not received any advice <laughs> from yeah, Dr. Yeah. Ramarao. So okay. I'm not in a position to tell you when and uh, what will be our next webinar. So wait for our announcement. <coughs> and of course, uh, last but not the least, I, I uh, uh, thank all the audiences uh, who were present uh, on our Zoom as well as on our YouTube because that YouTube count we do not know. And uh, YouTube uh, audience is future audience also because they can yeah. see it in future also. So I thank all of them. But at the same time, I, I request all the audiences that on the day of the webinar, they should try to pop, uh, uh, populate the Zoom crowd. They should use the Zoom platform so that we also get, we and the speakers, they get encouraged by the larger number because YouTube count, we really don't come to know uh, uh, the live numbers. So with yeah. that, I thank you once again, and uh, let us meet on the next webinar, which will not be uh, far away from now. Thank you very much, and thank good night. Well, well said, Malhotra. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.